Hey everyone, it's the middle of April and it's a beautiful day for some spring cleanup here in my garden. Uh, today we'll be talking about ornamental grasses. I love ornamental grasses and have been growing lots of different kinds for many years. Uh, they look awesome in summer, in fall, in winter. Uh, spring is when it's time to clean them up. So uh, I thought I would walk you through kind of the cleanup process for a few different kinds of grasses that I have growing here in my garden. And then we'll head over to the test garden and I'll show you how to clean up uh, Hakonicloa, which is one I don't have here at home. Let's get started with the little bunny fountain grass or penicetum. This is a smaller grass that only grows about 18 to 24 inches tall in my garden and it has these really pretty fuzzy green uh, seed heads in, the mi in midsummer all the way to frost. Uh, but it does not get started very early in the spring so there's no real big rush to get it cleaned up. Um, as you can see in the winter, uh, this is, you know, it's looking a little ragged by the end, you know, by now by spring. But in the winter it isn't, it isn't the most dramatic grass that you'll have in your garden, but it's a nice little, it, it makes nice little mounds and, and I really like it and it's good for the kind of the front of the border. I don't have too many plants. I've, you know, some people grow big sweeps of penicetums and they look so beautiful. I have a small little sweep here that is just fine uh, for cleaning up with my favorite Felco number no. six pruners. Uh, don't judge me on how dull or sharp they might be. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and get started here, okay? So it doesn't get started very early in spring, as I mentioned, and so we're not trying to preserve any you know, green growth or anything at the base because there pretty much isn't any. And when we cut it off, uh, we're just giving it a super short haircut. So it'll, it'll just be a buzz cut down there. So um, as you're digging here, I'll switch to my right hand here. And uh, it's just a matter of kind of cleaning it out and taking it back so the new growth can really, you know, come out of all of this. As you're cutting, you might notice a few um, a few blades of green grass. Don't worry if you cut those; that you're not, you won't hurt anything. If you have a large sweep, you might choose to use a powered hedge trimmer, um, and that that makes short work of it as well. When you're cleaning up ornamental grasses uh, in the spring, one thing that I one thing that I always make sure I do is wear gloves and wear long sleeves because some of the grasses have sharp blades. Uh, you'll especially notice that with some of the grasses that I'll be showing you pretty soon. But in any case, there's just a lot of kind of sticky and twiggy growth that and dried up uh, leaves that can really kind of scratch up your arms and um, and your hands. So it's best to wear long sleeves and uh, and gloves. Before you know it, you have this little stubby porcupine-like mound of uh, penicetum uh, stems. And uh, there may be a little bit of green showing, you, might, you can see there. And uh, before long, it'll grow into a nice mound of green grass. Uh, why don't I go ahead and rake up this debris so it doesn't blow away, and then we'll go and tackle a couple of other kinds of grasses. So this one's Carl Forster feather reed grass, and as you can see by spring, there's actually not all that much left of last year's growth. Uh, it's because it's a, to start, to start with, it's a more fine textured grass than some of the other grasses I'm gonna show you in a minute. But also, um, it uh, blooms really early, like this one blooms uh, in June here. And so where a lot of grasses that we have tend to bloom later, this is an earlier blooming one. So by winter, there really isn't much left of the seed pods. They're all either eaten or, um, you know, kind of shredded by the wind and the, the elements. So um, it's actually pretty easy to clean this one up as well. It's, uh, if you just have one, it works just fine with your um, hand pruners. And in fact, I tend to kind of just snap the stems off at the base. So let me just kind of show you. Um, you can just kind of like bend, bend them and uh, just pull them out. This kind of helps to save the new growth that's coming up because there's, as you can see, there's more new growth of the, on this one than there was on the penicetum I just showed you. I 
also like to go around the edges because it seems like there's usually a lot of really kind of dead stuff down at the base or right around the edges. So if you kind of, um, it's sort of like a daylily in that way where you kind of go around the edges and pull, pull out the dead brown growth. This looks better already, doesn't it? This grass is the centerpiece of my front yard bed, and it is porcupine grass. 364 days a year, I love this grass. It has beautiful stri yellow stripes, horizontal stripes on every leaf. It, uh, in the fall, in the late summer, it uh, has these really pretty kind of pink, tan, purpley plumes of flowers that you can see the remnants of here. They persist throughout the winter. I mean, and it's got this great height and the shape is so dramatic. It's a great plant, but this day of the year, it is no fun to deal with because uh, its leaf, its blades are sharp and the, uh, the remaining stems are really sturdy and woody and they're kind of hard to get out of here. So uh, I've tried a lot of different things over the years and this is one of the techniques that seems to be uh, the most successful and the least difficult. And uh, again, this is the plant you'll want to wear. You definitely want to make sure you have long sleeves and uh, gloves and potentially even eye protection if you plan to be uh, getting too up close and personal with your plant. So to gather up my first clump, I think I can just use one bungee. And I'm gonna grab my cheaters here just to protect my eyes while I give this uh, clump of grasses a hug. The idea is that you just wanna get it gathered up enough so that when you cut it off at the base, you can um, just get it out of there easily. Otherwise, there's a bunch of stems that are going every which way and they're, they're just really, it's just really awkward to deal with because they're so tall and woody and um, you know, it's tough. The, um, I have done this with pruners, my hand pruners over the years, believe it or not. And uh, that's a um, repetitive motion injury waiting to happen, I think. And uh, sometimes my husband and I would uh, tra take turns, we'd tag team it. But I don't really recommend that method. So um, today we're going to use these uh, hedge trimmers. That seems to work a lot better to be able to just kind of power through it. And again, this is a warm season grass just like the penicetum is. And so there's really nothing going on down here as far as new growth. There might be a few tiny little stems here and there, but it's mostly just dead stems and leaves that have collected in here. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, give it a cut. You can cut uh, 6 inches, 12 inches, whatever you want, but you know, I, I, you don't want to get all the way down to the ground, but leaving, you know, 6 inches or so above ground is, is really just about right. So then you have this tidy bundle that you can trundle over to your uh, compost pile if that's what you do with it. Uh, these are so large that I actually don't compost these. I send them away in my city yard waste bin and let them comp compost them uh, because it just takes so long for them to break down and that's just not practical in my small yard to take up space in my bin. So this makes it easy. I can just take this bundle, drop it in my yard waste bin and remove the bungee and uh, move on to the next clump. Let's get started with that. All right, so this maiden grass is all cut back now. And uh, now I just need to rake up all the debris from, the, from this area and all the leaves that have collected in it. And uh, notice that spring is a really good time to divide grasses too. And this is when you'll see if they need divided or not because as you're cleaning it up, you might notice kind of a dead center. And this one actually does have kind of, kind of a, 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 a dead spot in the center that if we wanted to divide it we could it probably would be a good a good idea to go ahead and um, cut some chunks out of it and get rid of the dead the dead roots and things that aren't producing any new leaves um, and so that'll be a project for another day but now I actually so maybe uh, one day a year was maybe too much that I don't like this plant maybe it's really only about 20 minutes which is what 
it takes to clean it up. So uh, we'll finish up with this plant and then we'll go ahead and tackle the Hakona Cloa over at the test garden. So now we're going to prune um, Hakona Cloa, or Japanese forest grass, and this project is much easier than the miscanthus that we just did at my house. We're at the test garden here, and uh, these uh, small clumps of Hakona Cloa are uh, just, um, I think they're a year or two years old now, so they're, they're still pretty small, but they, uh, they spread and form a nice uh, ground cover, especially in um, like partly shady areas. It's really beautiful ground cover there. And as you can see, this one, um, has some nice uh, gold foliage coming up and that's pretty normal. There's a couple cultivars called All Gold and Areola that both have uh, gold foliage. And so um, this is easy because all you have to do is kind of look for the dead stuff and uh, either pull it out or cut it off. And it usually just kind of pulls out on its own pretty easily. So that's, you know, no problem. I have my pruners here in case we need them, but I doubt we will. and the rest of the foliage will kind of come up and cover these things that are left. And this way, by pulling it out, just like with the, um, the feather reed grass, by pulling it out, you don't cut off the new growth and it just kind of takes off a little faster. All right, so now we can just clean up the debris and we're all set for spring. Hi, I'm Jack from Garden Gate Magazine. I hope you enjoyed our video. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel and press the bell to get notified each time we upload a new video. You'll get content with useful gardening tips, design ideas, and how-to help for all levels of gardeners. I especially enjoy the garden tours and talks with fellow gardeners across the country. Be sure to follow us on all of our social platforms. You can see the list below. Thanks for watching.